Welcome to the Small Unmanned Systems Business Expo. My name is Gary Mortimer and I'm the editor of SUS News. I'm off flying now on a task here in South Africa where I live. I live on the bottom right hand side of South Africa uh, in the province of KwaZulu Natal um, and so we're about 100 miles inland here. Currently I'm working with some researchers on a project to track uh, jackal and serval cats. We've also got a single caracal as part of the survey. You're probably not aware but all of us at SUS News uh, have got something to do with unmanned aircraft systems, be they professional or be they very simple stuff like high flight. Um, but we're all aware of the reality of operating a small unmanned aircraft. As I've been driving, rather typically, the winds completely change. So I'm having to change where I intended to fly from. I'm positioned now about eight kilometers from a base station that listens out for radio callers. And I'm going to be using my aircraft to look into the next valley um, for position reports from animals that might be over the radio horizon. The collars are quite clever. They record information every two hours and then every, every 10 minutes they shout to see if they're in range of a base station. If they're in range of a base station, they handshake and then they dump all the information that they have not sent uh, since the last time they spoke to the base station. The unit that I fly in the aircraft, um, if it hears one of their collars, it also interrogates the collars, gets the information and does that for 15 minutes. So it listens for 15 minutes and then it transmits for 15 minutes back to the base station that's within sight of it. And I know from past um, flights that, as I say, I'm about eight kilometers from the base station and I know that I can talk to it from here. Um, so it's pretty cool. So already we've come back eight Ks. We've extended the field of view quite dramatically for the collars. We've got, I think at the moment, six cats um, collared in the area and four jackals. Um, the jackal are quite extraordinary. They're going quite a long way. Um, sort of about a 15 kilometer range. Um, the cats, more, more so about five kilometers. Uh, but I'm running around now to another slope to try and get onto wind for that. Using a super, super simple platform, it's a bigger version of the most popular hobbyist uh, unmanned system. That would have been the Easy Star from Multiplex. That quickly got copied in China. Um, and this, this variant is called the Super Sky Surfer. Um, the antenna sticking out the canopy, that's for the tracking uh, unit or for the repeater unit. Um, I can get a good 30 minutes flight time out of this platform uh, carrying as I am now just over 100 grams which is hardly anything unlike taking photos the great thing about radio stuff is you don't have to worry about things being stable things um, pointing the right direction you just fly so I'm going to use slope lift where I can to extend my endurance and push forward from the slope looking for thermals and leap into them but should anything go wrong I'm not happy then I'll just flick the switch and you know, come back and all the time as I'm flying I'll use the stabilized modes from the autopilot I've already flown um, once this morning and in that one I just popped the thing up to 500 feet and then started orbiting the left of me whilst I carried on with my day um, and that was too trying to see an animal that's over that hill over there. The bulk of the animals are in front of us. The re repeating unit we need to speak back to is over the other side of this lake, about 8 kilometers away. There's an animal about 15 k's away over there. We might hear that one. And there's one over the hills over there, which is a real difficult one to, to, uh, to, to get to talk back to. Um, Arrived, um, so I'll go home now. 
leap on the computer and see what, uh, see who uh, this, this aircraft has seen. And maybe it's seen something that's over the valley here um, that the base station wouldn't have seen uh, otherwise. Just rushing out to see if I can find Catport number seven, the base station, and where I was flying yesterday, it's over that or through that gap. That's the gap I was hoping to see through. The base station's actually over the back of the hill there. Cat number seven was caught just over on my right, just over here somewhere, underneath that little bump there. So I'm going to fly up on the top here and see if we can see it. We all know what unmanned systems are useful, the useful, dull, dangerous, dirty. Well, I'm going to add another D to that whole thing and say discount. Okay, the aircraft's in the air. It's doing the dull bit for me. It's just going to fly round and round for uh, about 30 minutes and then uh, I'll go back and look at the data. But the discount bit, of course, is because it costs so much more to fly an aircraft there and have a look. Um, so I thought I'd drive around and show you what the base station looks like. We've just been flying over the back of that hill there, over there in the distance. Um, the base station. Solar charged, uh, 3G communications in there, and the antennas for 430 odd megs, that's what the collars work at. Just about where the tip at the top of the antenna is, the hill over in the distance. Again, I don't know what my finger's doing there. That's where we're flying on Friday, so that's this is where we're speaking uh, back to. Uh, as you can tell, it's a pretty horrible place that I have to come and fly at. Um, I say I don't always come here, just as long as when I fly, I can see this point, then generally I can communicate with it. I'm very, very lucky to be able to fly where I fly. Well, there we go. There's another 38 minutes in the bag for my suits in the bag for my super simple system. Um, the Ruby Autopilot that flies it's doing really, really well. Jackal number one in our surveys lives in all the ground you can see in front of you here, as well as about it also ranges about 10 kilometers behind me over the hill as well. So the value of these GPS radio link collars is, is really coming to the fore. If you've ever had to use traditional VHF collars with a Yagi antenna, you'll know what I'm talking about. The RG Pilot Mega from 3D Robotics that I have is being redeployed into a hexacopter for another environmental task, uh, one that we used a flying wing for before, but I'm going to revisit it with a multi-rotor. I'm clocking hours up with simple unmanned aircraft and hopefully helping to get some serious work done. And it's happening in the background. It is supplementary to the scientist's work. It's just a part of it. It's just a tool. And day-to-day -day use of unmanned systems, small unmanned systems, is where we're going for dirty discount tasks. So a very quick look at the data. I can look at the points seen uh, on Google Maps. I can also download an Excel file, which is in fact what I do. And then I place all that onto Google Earth because I find seeing it on 3D in Google Earth shows me little things like this valley here and all sorts of other things. I can get my head around it a lot, lot easier. Um, you can see the flights, the last three flights I've made here. Here's, well, you can just, quite obvious really, there's the orbits and there's the tracks up and back down to it. So very, very simple flying, very dull flying. Let's throw in the cats. So there they are, seven cats in total. Um, this one over here, the caracal, only one caracal in the in the trial. He's very far away. He was caught a fair old distance. In fact, let's add in let's add in the elevation profile of where he is. So he was caught 17 odd kilometres away, and over a hill. You can see that quite clearly from this. So it's quite a problem to see up there. Um, so the aircraft's needed in that case to get up and look over the horizon a bit more and that's worked so far which is great. I think the biggest surprise to all of us has been just how far the jack will go. Really very small, let's get rid of the cats, very small animals but my word they travel. This one, number one, goes all the way up there and he was caught down there so let's quickly measure that. So that's 36 kilometers to there but in actual fact he goes he goes all the way down here so he's got a range of at least 45 kilometers there which is quite extraordinary so that's a quick look at the data i get 
So what might it cost me if I wanted to start from scratch and enter the world of remote sensing from unmanned aircraft? It's amazing how cheap it is these days. A quick flick around the web and you'll soon find that. The new RG Pilot Mega 2.6 from 3D Robotics, that's just two cents short of $240. You get one of those, you'll then need an aircraft to fly it in. The new Sky Eye, a two meter, just slightly smaller than the platform I've been flying. But other than the wing size and the change to the nose, identical. They, they probably come out of the same factory in China. That retails for $114. You'll need to be able to speak to the thing. You'll need a, a command and control link. It's not a bad job. The FR Sky 16 channel radio with built in telemetry, $175. You'll need some batteries. Why don't you get four of these? And you can have two in the air flying and uh, two ready on the ground to fly again. Um, Get four of those, they'll set you back $44. And then oh, you'll need supplementary things like battery connectors, and you'll need a back to power things, and you'll need the battery charger. But basically, the whole kit caboodle ready to go comes into about $645. Now, that's not bad for a platform that you can get a sensor into the sky over whatever you're interested in. I've currently flown 10 hours with the setup, so at the moment I'm sat on a cost of $64.50 an hour if I'd bought everything from scratch. So that definitely has to bring it into the discount category. I'll add a few pictures in, you can see the Serval's very, very pretty cat. Uh, the largest one caught so far weighed 15 kilos. The jackal are actually much smaller, even though they're very, very loud at night. If you've ever travelled to Africa, you'll hear them all the time cackling away. and we add red tape to their collars to stop farmers shooting them. We're actually going to start adding reflective tape next time because they use spotlights when they're shooting them uh, <laughs> at night. So hopefully that will shine up and they'll see. We had no idea how far the jackal would go. So we've told farmers in our area to look out for them. But uh, 20 or 30 k's away, we don't know about that. The real heroes of the case or this piece are Bruce and Ramesh. Ramesh is studying the serval and Bruce studying the jackal. Uh, the man in charge or the man sorting the collars is Victor Hugo uh, from Animal Trackham and uh, he and I are steadily developing more reliable uh, systems for tracking animals from above and it's been a great deal of fun. Mm -hmm.